With so many video game genres out there, it can be daunting to try out a new one. But if you've gotten bored with the games you play, then this video is going to help you potentially find your new favourite video game genre. First, I'm going to tackle open world games. Now, this genre has been very saturated with poorly crafted and empty open worlds, such as Horizon and Redfall. However, one of the best proper open world games is Red Dead Redemption 2. The game starts with a pretty hefty tutorial to introduce you to the basics, which is great for beginners. The game has got tons of stuff that you can do and is a very saturated open world compared to something that is empty like Ghost of Tsushima. The main story is also gut-wrenching and captivating which will easily keep you occupied for 50 plus hours. With the release of Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield, many players want to dip their toes into the world of RPGs. With so many great options, it's hard to boil it down to just one. But for those looking for the classic turn-based RPG combat, then Pokemon Sword and Shield is a great choice for you. This game has dumbed down a lot of the mechanics to cater to even the most beginner of players. And while some complain that it's too easy, it is a great experience for those to casually try out a genre that is generally very complex and long. Obviously, it's a Switch only game, so if you're looking for something not on Switch, I recommend Final Fantasy XIV, which has all the benefits of Pokemon Sword without needing a Switch. And plus, the tutorial spans all the way to level 50 if you need it. Now, if turn based combat is not for you, look no further than Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Its expansive world and the choose your own adventure style story is a little something for everyone. The combat is primarily shooting and the story is decent and if you don't care then you can basically make the game choose its own story for you and will easily keep you playing for 60 to 100 hours. The shooter genre has been given a pretty bad rep for being toxic, rightly so though. The classic COD lobbies hating anyone. Hey, he ain't talking. He ain't talking. Why are you talking, dumbass, bitch? Now I'm really in here, but turn your fucking music down. Turn your audio down, because I know you got your fucking kids sleeping. And guess what? I'm waking them up, you dumbass motherfucker. Shut the fuck up and take care of your goddamn kids, you ugly ass, fat ass, dumb ass, stupid ass bitch. Shut the fuck up before I slap the shit out of you, dumbass nigga. Put money in your goddamn jaw. You already missing teeth. You better miss a lot more, you stupid ass bitch. Shut the fuck up when I'm talking to you. A grown ass man talking. You a little boy, I mean, nigga. I'm fucking spitting on face, nigga. and constantly getting told to log off in Halo, it can be pretty intimidating to set foot into such a wide variety of games with intricate and twitchy gameplay. Now, for shooters, you can't go wrong with Halo. And I know I just dunked on it for being toxic. However, in both the Master Chief Collection and Infinite, you can just turn off chat. Combining that with the slower and less twitchy gameplay, it's a great place to start for a first-person shooter. Strategy games have been regarded for a fairly hardcore audience. Civilization V is probably the best way to get into strategy games, as it's fairly intuitive and with the incredible Steam sales, you aren't going to spend too much. It shares many mechanics with Civ VI, but it has a few less complex mechanics, and of course, there is an easy strategy to win against any friends that suck. Racing games have been dominated by the Forza series, with their incredibly detailed car models and intricate controls. While Forza Horizon 5 may be the best racing game, a more beginner-friendly game would have to be The Crew 2. With fairly good car models, no reason to pay for DLC, an easy grind, and much simpler mechanics for drifting and driving, you'll have tons of fun. And for once, Ubisoft made a game that has tons of content easy mechanics and doesn't have the most time out very soon. Similar to the strategy genre, stealth games can be very complex and unforgiving. This is why Ghost of Tsushima is the best way to hop into the stealth genre. While the open world may not be the best, you're not thrown straight into the stealth. Your character Jin is learning stealth as you learn it, so instead of starting as a badass stealth master, you learn with your character. Another big bonus is that you're very capable if you get caught, because you're as much of a badass as combat as you are in stealth. Most of us don't like being scared.
Alright, but if you want to dip your toes into horror games because of the praise that so many get, then you might want to check out the survival horror game Soma. While it was created by the developers that brought us the Amnesia games, this game does not rely on jump scares, but instead uses common fears and atmosphere to scare you. If this is too much for you, you can always turn on safe mode and that definitely makes the game less scary. Shovel Knight, Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank, Kirby. All of these games are brilliant, but they're just that bit too difficult for a beginner first getting their hands on the controls. To save you some time, Mario Odyssey is the game for you. With an almost endless amount of ways to collect moons, which are the primary objectives in the game, you'll never get stuck. This game has learnt so many different aspects from the greats over time, that depending on which way you decide to go, you will be ready because of this game. For another genre that is heavily dominated by the most hardcore of no life gamers, fighting games do have one or two options for beginners. Either Fantasy Strike, which is free to play and will teach you the basics, or Street Fighter V, which is what I personally recommend. This game will teach you motions, charges, linking, and other universal mechanics, has plenty of characters to suit any playstyle, and ranked will actually pit you against players of your skill level. A big plus is that it teaches you fundamental skills that will transfer to any other game in the genre. While these games may all be great ways to experience gaming from a different angle, we all know that the best game of all time Call of Duty Vanguard. Hey, you guys want to play Call of Duty Vanguard? Fuck off. 